we're back here with more new world and we're on our journey to level 60 we are 31 right now and the main story continues at level 35 well i could continue it right now but you need to be level 35 to actually um, go to the area and do what you have to do so we're going to do some side quests i'm going to do some resource gathering and some crafting and along the way hopefully we get to 35 rather quickly and then we can continue the main story and there we go, crafting ourselves to level 32. Put that right into focus. Beautiful. These crates really pay off. Um, I found another schematic for furniture, a maple stool. So what is this? Is it like an, an Azoth tree, is it? It definitely has a lot of energy flowing into it. A couple of dungeons uh, later, we got our missing bones. Let's hand that in and see. Now we get a chest for it, but I think... Oh, nice, and we're level 33, that's awesome. And I think he has another quest. Would you like some bones? It gives us another crate. But then he has... Oh, the bones from Starstone Boros should work. And that gives us the next one. So Starstone uh, Boros, that's the next dungeon, I think. I don't think I'm able for that. Let me see. What level do we need to be for that? Shattered Obelisk, level 35. So yeah, level 35 seems to be in general the big next uh, milestone. So this seems to be another, like similar to Dead Cove, an elite area where you can grind and I have to get all the way in there to finish one of the quests. That's insane. So let's see if this random hunter and myself actually can manage to um, do this. Like a third person decided to join in. We're not teamed up or anything, but that's okay. As long as we get a hit in on all the mobs, we're gonna be doing okay. So this is another named boss. We have to see if we can get at least one or two hits into that and hopefully get some loot. Okay, that's it. Any loot drops for us? I don't think we did enough damage. This whole house right beside the boss is like full of chests and scrolls, loads and loads of stuff to loot here. And we're level 34. I think we finally have the big moment and reach level 75. Yes, in our furniture crafting. And this is a very important milestone because now we can make trophies. And what trophies are good for, they give you a passive bonus to your crafting, to your combat or to your gathering skills. Now the way trophies work is you put it into your house. Each house has, has a certain number of trophy slots, but you can only have one version in each house. So if I craft three or four logging trophies, which should give me small bonus in the number of resources I get from chopping down trees, I can only have that one time in my house. It won't let me put two of them into the same house. However, I'm allowed to have in each house the same type of trophy. So I can have a logging trophy in all three houses one time, but not multiple times in each house. And yes, those passive bonuses are global, which means if I have in Monarch Bluffs my house and have those logging trophies hanging there, I can be anywhere on the map and I still get that bonus. And that is why it's really great if you have three houses at some point and you want to decide, oh, I need these, bo these bonuses are the most important to me. You can hang them up in each of those houses one time but they all get added together so you have three times that bonus added to you when you're out in the world and of course for leveling up your furniture skill it is an amazing crafting recipe to have to increase further your skill because you can see it's 1700 points towards furnishing but the resources are quite straightforward to get the very first trophy that i'm gonna be crafting is going to be the lumber, uh, the lumber trophy or the logging trophy. So we're gonna craft that. It's gonna give us, of course, the 1,700 experience, which is very nice right now. And now we have our first trophy. And to get your bonus from your trophy, just go to your house, click on the trophy, place it anywhere inside, outside, on the wall, it doesn't really matter. And then you can see it goes right here into your trophy slot where it's gonna apply the bonus to you. Might as well craft ourselves a minor mining gathering trophy. Hang it right here beside our logging trophy and then we have room for the other trophies here as well. Now when it comes to what they actually give you, the game doesn't seem to tell you, it just says small bonus and that's it. Um, according to the websites like New World Fans and all that, it says in the description that they give you a luck bonus roll of 500. So which means it's not a permanent increase according to that but every time you chop a tree every time you mine you have an extra 500 whatever those points actually mean 
um, on top of the percentage of luck where you get that extra bonus of things or maybe the gems or maybe an extra resource or in the case of trees you get uh, more logs back so I've seen it actually chopping mature trees of the same size sometimes I got 29 sometimes I got 31 so there seems to be that extra bonus you get occasionally okay I have no idea what's going on this is getting very very risky I'm trying to take on a level 25 portal by myself but I have a lot of ads showing up, so this is getting very hairy. So the little guys keep respawning, so we're going to have to focus on the big guys. One down. Come on. Yes, one down. Ooh, they explode. I forgot. Okay, now we can go chasing again. I think he's down. Yeah. Okay, from the distance, now take him out. There we go. And skedaddle, skedaddle. Come on. Oh. Okay, he's down. Now we're gonna have to take these orbs out. Come on, come on, come on. Little guy doesn't hurt as much. Come on, come on. Yes, come on, where is it? Why, why are they still there? Surely we just, oh, we have to do another side as well. Okay, okay, okay. Celebrated too early, I see. So once we get rid of these impalers, we got, um, the little guys are not gonna be that bad. So the impalers are the biggest problem here. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go. That's the second one. Boom, and I think there's one more left. Yeah, okay, we're gonna need to clear out some. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, it's nearly there nearly there just keep clicking on it keep clicking on it let them pound you while you heal yourself come on oh it's just too much come on okay now they're stunned and yes okay now we just have to destroy the carapace so let's go Yes, stay in the healing, stay in the healing. We got a second person helping us now. Awesome. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. What's happening? Is it still not? Oh, now we have to. 
click on it was the staff. There we go. I think the other person's taking the aggro, which would be great. Come on, come on. Let's go. They're retreating. That's good. That's good. That's good. We're so close. Yes. Oh, let's give this poor guy a heal. Wow, that was intense. That was totally worth it. That was really exciting. We didn't get a lot of experience. I don't know. I would have to look back at the recording, but that was exciting. Ooh, look at that. We got some green, some blue, and we got some uh, tuning orb, corrupted silver, and corrupted fragments. Nice. Okay, this is it. Big moment. Last tray. And here comes the juicy XP. Boom. Logging level 100. What a milestone. This took forever. Now we can finally chop down Weirdwood Tree, which is these blue trees, and finally get access to a tree, which gives us more experience than the little bit we got from chopping normal trees. Wow, this is amazing. So what is the next milestone on the logging? It's Ironwood at 175. So at 125, we're able to see Weirdwood. And we're level 35. We can get a second house now, which I can't afford. And we finally can continue with our main quest. But before we do, I'm gonna want to head over here to Restless Shore because that seems to be the only place that has a level for loom. So you can start making my fancy thread. So now that we can make silk, we can actually start working um, at the next opportunity, not right now, to level up our armoring skill to level 110. And then we can make our own medium gear using that silk for like a really nice high gear score. Looks like we might have our very first trade or sell on our hands. There we go, there's Seki. I crafted myself a spare log storage chest. I think Seki wants to buy it. So let's put it in here. And there we go. Excellent. Logged in and trade. And we got the money. Look at that. Beautiful. Now this is interesting. I think we're going to get into some really cool gathering speeds here. I'm just leveling up my own tool crafting so I can craft my own. But there's actually a very affordable star metal tool on the auction house. Um, let's actually check every auction house to see what we have. They're usually priced quite high. But here we have for 390 a star metal harvesting sickle, which not only gives us extra durability, but it also gains 6.7% more harvesting experience. And it has a 41% chance uh, gathering a node. One Azoth only per node, but that's still one Azoth. So I think we're going to buy that. That is really, really cool. I know there's a fee to it, and that was a good chunk of our money gone. But that is awesome. That's our first star metal tool. Nice. And here in Windsward, we actually have a star metal pickaxe, which also gives us 6.7% more mining experience and a 15% yield. We're going to snap that up before it's too late. So the improvement here is that our uh, mining pickaxe went from 266 to 388 gathering speed. And on our sickle, it is going from 250 to 391. Oh, this is exciting. We can actually now chop down weird wood trees. This is my very first weird wood tree since I leveled up to 100. This is very exciting indeed. And our first weird wood. We are actually able to wood chop <laughs> these doggos now. These are these weird terror wolves. They come from the earth. I think they're made from roots. But because of our wood chopping skill now at 100, we are able to skin them now, which is really awesome. I love that feature. So this time, this bear is actually a quest. And we were lucky to find a couple of guys, so we're gonna kill him again, but this time it's the quest active. <laughs> oh, and I get to skin him. That is actually really, really cool. It's the first time I'm skinning this guy. Let's see if we get anything special. Nah, just raw height. I thought we would get like fur or some thick height or something. That would have been amazing. Wow, level 36. Just as we entered a new region, region XP leveling is tight. Put the points into focus. Okay, we have arrived at Leapers. Investigate the storm wall in the ruins. It's not going to be easy. We have to fight our way through it. Ooh. Oh, big boss fight. Oh, 
Okay, one down. That's the end of him. Let's go through the portal. What is going on here? Okay. Examine angry earth power source. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Let's loot everything first. Let's do it. Talk to Dr. Theophrastus. Oh, okay. Is that it? Okay, we have to go all the way back there. Hello there, Doc. I'm back. Incredible. A storm, however small, projected by the collective consciousness of the earth itself. Terra cogitatum. And you realize what this means about the storm wall encircling the island, yeah? Not at all. <laughs> it's also created by the angry earth. Exactly. The crimson particles aren't an indication of the corruption's strength. They're proof of its failure. The angry earth is preventing the corruption from escaping Aeternum. Do you realize the complete implications of this? That storm wall has been there for millennia. The angry earth must sense that the corruption represents a danger abroad as well. This is where the faction must unite. Oh, that again. <laughs> Just when we've made this discovery, this might even explain the blight. I suppose you did make this possible, however. Fine. How do you propose we unite the factions? We start with a parley. That seems entirely reasonable. An armistice would certainly aid in the cause of science. Uh, all right. I'll need to speak with some other alchemists, but I give you my word, at least one of us will attend. Well, that's a start, at least. Yes, yes, it could be a good thing. Do send a message when you know the time and place. Now, what to do with all this bear urine? It has to be useful for something. A bomb, maybe. Wow. <laughs> And we're gonna have to go back to Brightwood to talk to Jonas. So the Marauders, I think, is the only ones left. Welcome home. I've been busy recruiting new wardens. Our little family is growing by the day. I don't suppose you had any luck with the plague people, did you? Well, they attend the parley. Bright skies and blasted minds, you astound me. Perhaps this little scheme could work out. It needs to yield results quickly. The Tempest strength is growing. The corrupted are still coming south in huge numbers. I should send some wardens to Great Cleave, establish a defensive line. Meanwhile, there's your faction, Polly. I'm still a bit skeptical about these marauders. They're the only faction left. Yes, and the most aggressive from what I've been told. No hierarchy to organize them. Getting warriors like that to come to the table will be difficult. I'll think of something. Well, I have a thought. Perhaps another one of my mad flights of fancy. One of the new recruits mentioned a secret fighting circle within the Marauders. A competition of sorts. The Marauders respect individual strength, so... I could end up this contest, I guess. Just what I was thinking. I say give it a shot. As Sophocles said, fortune is not on the side of the faint-hearted. Word is... Those combatants all gather in cutlass keys. So, go show them why they should listen. All right, let's do this. I am level 37 now. We put more points into focus and I'm running out of Azoth. So uh, I have to hunt down some corrupted uh, portals and monoliths so we can continue fast traveling to where we have to go to continue questing. Now, each of those corrupted monoliths or the little mini corruption events uh, should give us about 20 Azoth which is very handy. They also give you some rewards, some XP, so it's not bad overall. And one more, and that should give us another 20 A's off. So we should have 70 now. We should be nearly enough to go where we have to continue the main quest. Here we go for the optional part of the quest, finding the shrine. And now we're gonna head down here to actually do the quest. Here we go, this is the place, Rima Bahar. Hmm. A new face, but not a complete mystery. I've heard of your name and your feats. You are strange. I am Rima Bahar, a committed marauder, and many people also find me strange. Perhaps we'll get along. Oh, we get some Azoth, that's great. It's possible you've heard of me? 
I have some renown as a musician, among other things. Here I've come to fight and grow, and to watch others do the same. You should be fighting the corruption. Oh, but we are fighting corruption. Here in the fighting pit, we test ourselves against those twisted creatures. Of course, there is one among the corrupted whom we all fear to fight. That monster, Thorpe. Thorpe? Isn't Captain Thorpe? Oh, you know of him. Since you're standing here, he must not know of you. Let's hope that continues. When Thorpe comes around, this turns from sport to slaughter. He doesn't respect the rules of the game. Not at all. Where can I find him? You seem too clever to go looking for death. Besides, you don't find Thorpe. He finds you. <laughs> Back to the matter at hand. I assume you've come seeking glory in the ring. Go, fight inspiringly. The Marauders will be watching. Alright. Let's do this. Yeah, Thorpe, that was the guy I think in the very beginning when we started the game, when you get to the beach, you have this little cutscene where um, this guy is like all of a sudden all corrupted and it's the first time you encounter the corruption and it is your captain and uh, of the boat that you were on and uh, you're fighting him the very first time. Okay, we're just gonna have to slaughter a couple of dual masters, that's fine. There we go. Piece of cake, Rima. Well, someone has proven themselves. I saw you fight. Your moves are like the notes of a beautiful song. Oh, I'm wow. I'm composing the melody in my head already. Others are talking about you as well. Well, hold your horses, they are beautiful. As you've seen, the competition is simple. Defeat as many creatures as you can before you drop from exhaustion. The current record holder is my beloved Ursa. She is truly a force of nature. I'm sure she'll want to meet you. How did you first come to Atenum? It's a long and thrilling story. In the dead of night, on a ship bound for Tripoli, I escaped my bonds and dove overboard into the cold Mediterranean Sea. I expected to die, but instead, I washed up on Aeternum shore. You jumped overboard on purpose? Yes, to escape a fate worse than death. Marriage <laughs> to an old man I'd never met. The Sultan's men dragged me onto that ship. They thought they had me trapped, beaten, but they did not know me. So the Sultan forced you to marry? Yes, although he didn't want to. He was a good man, mostly, and a generous patron of my music back in Constantinople. But after I stabbed that prince, he faced great political pressure to make me disappear. You stabbed a prince? Well, not fatally. <laughs> he challenged me to a duel after I stole away Fatma, his fiancée. He was so angry. Is it my fault that my beautiful Fatma preferred me over that joke of a prince? <laughs> oh, Fatma. I wonder if she ever did marry. So where is she? Was... Not Fatma. Oh, that's strange. She should have arrived by now. She is the type who likes to make an entrance, but... Oh, I can go look for her. A very kind offer. Ursa is an honorable woman. Too honorable, maybe. She could have been taken by surprise or by deceit. I'd start by checking the road to the north. Cool, we'll do. Let's have a look around here. A trail of blood. That's not good. The trail ends here. Search for more clues. I can see you sneaky corrupted standing there. Cleanse the cave corrupted orbs with your staff. Defeat corrupted gladiator Ursa. No, I have to defeat her. She got corrupted. No. Okay, let's do this. Loot the stockpiles first before we do that in case everything disappears. Nice. 
the second one. Beautiful. A note in the wreckage of Ursa. Dear Marauder Lowlifes, I've taken your champion's soul. It was easy. Ursa is mine now. Bring me the box or I hunt down every Marauder in the tournament. Don't test my patience. I have none. Signed Thorb. Oh, there's Ursa. I actually had to wait for them all to respawn because she wasn't there the first time we were here. Oh, we got a corner now. Nice. Did she drop anything? No, that's it. So I got some bad news about Ursa there, Rima. There you are. But where is Ursa? The champion of my own heart. Thorp corrupted her. I'm sorry. What? Let me read that letter. This is... How could this have... How dare he? I am known for two things. My way with words, and when words fail, my blade. Thorpe and his corrupted will get the latter. I will answer this challenge in blood. Yes, let's fight the Corrupted together. Together? Is this the Soul Warden Alliance I've been hearing about? I know some marauders who have rallied to the cause. And perhaps now, I will do so as well. The factions are meeting to parley. Very well. Between my thirst for vengeance and my respect for you, I will take part in this. I will look for other marauders to join us as well. Just tell me when and where. I look forward to fighting at your side. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Like, this quest reward gives us then the level 3 Azos staff. So we have corruptions of level 25, a 35, and I think the next one is then 45, and the last one is 55. Yeah, this is a 45 one, which is a staff tier 3, and then we have 55, which is staff tier 4, which I'm assuming is the final one then, unless there's another one at 60. Jonas, I have good news. Well now. Our peacemaker returns. We already heard that some marauders have agreed to parley. Well done. We've received a more troubling dispatch as well, from a warlord among the corrupted. He mentions you by name. Oh, balls. Let me guess. <laughs> Thorpe. Then you do know him. Yes, some of the other wardens have seen him rallying the corrupted. There is some notion that he may be this tempest figure we've heard about. I doubt that. We arrived together. You know him personally? Ah, that would explain the contents of this dispatch. He threatens you by name, accusing you of betrayal, thievery, cowardice, and the list goes on. Something about his box. Yeah, he kept moaning about the box when we first saw him dying on the beach. Um, look at that. We're gonna get that Azor stuff now. That's amazing. Whoever he was, when you knew him, He's changed into something else now. He certainly commands many corrupted and wields the power of the Tempest. And he's calling you out by name. Do we know where he is? In Restless Shores, I've been dispatching most new wardens to hold the lines in Great Cleave and Shuttered Mountain. But I've seen some of our best scouts to look for weaknesses in Thorpe's base. I know you barely could tell the difference between him actually not doing his voiceover on this one and me doing it, so it's like uncanny. Um, then that's where I'm going. Well, but... what? Not only is it an insane risk, but what about the parley? You convinced all the factions to sit down together, and now you would just vanish before negotiations even begin? Begin the parley without me. I'll be back before you know it. Hurry back, will you? Who knows how long I'll be able to keep the factions from each other's throats without you? I don't think that's at all what it said here, he said. So it seems the voiceover and the text is a little bit out of sync here. Anyway, let's accept. We need to be level 40 for that. So that will be a little bit of a journey and a half before we're there. So that's pretty cool, actually, what he was talking about, that I was called out by name. There's a note here that just appeared. Uh, you are a traitor, a thief, and a coward. I should have drowned you when I had the chance. These games are, have gone on long enough. I'm sick of hearing your name. Come to me and let us finish this. Bring my box or leave it with your soul warden friends. I can just as easily take it off their corpses. Signed Thorpe, future ruler of Eternum. Wow. Well, I suppose at least he has the confidence. I've seen that we have to level up now to 40 before we can continue the main story. I'm just um, working on my crafting skills and I had to migrate my jewel crafting and gem cutting over to Restless Shore because they're the only ones who have 
a high tier outfitting stations for jewel crafting and a high tier stone cutting table so we can cut our gems. Also, this hammer here is actually something that dropped in the cave, I think, when we were fighting the corrupted. And this hammer is pretty good. It's slightly better than what I have, but I love the leeching Path of Destiny. Heal for 20% of the damage dealt from Path of Destiny. So this here is Path of Destiny, and whatever damage that does um, heals you for 20% of the damage, which could be quite a lot, seeing that you can hit like a lot of people with it. So if you're doing corruption portals, you can theoretically heal yourself like at least 50%. And for that weapon, of course, we want to have an Amber because it converts 40% of damage to nature damage based on your focus. And we're only using a 30% right now, so now we're cutting our first brilliant gem. And this is going to go right into that beautiful hammer. Touch gem, 40% of damage converted. Nice. Yes. Now for this episode, I was hoping I'm gonna get to 40, but it has been taking a while and I also have been focused a lot on uh, grinding and testing out certain things like how mining works, how luck works. Like I have a whole set here, which um, I started buying from the auction house when they were very cheap, which has reinforced mining luck, which is something I'm gonna probably make a separate video about. So I'm just messing around with that uh, in the mining areas to see what kind of nice drops we can get. But um, yeah, I'm gonna continue next time when we're gonna hopefully get to 40. And I also want to start going through the Everfall quests because they will give us a free tuning orb so we can get the next dungeon actually. And it would be great if in the next episode we can uh, do the next dungeon as well and grind that a little bit because the drops are definitely gonna be better than what we are wearing and we might see some improvements. Anyway, I hope you guys had a good time with this episode. If you did, remember to kick that like button in the balls and I hope I see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Until then, as always, future pass and happy gaming.